Hello again, everybody. It's Steve Grisetti, co-founder of MoviePicks.com and author of the MoviePicks.com Guide to Vegas Movie Studio Platinum. And here we are in part five of our eight-part basic training for a Vegas Movie Studio Platinum. As we saw in our last session, there are a number of ways to apply an effect to your movie. You, you can apply your effect to a media clip while it's still in Project Media. That way it's pre-applied for your movie whenever you use it. You can apply it to an event on your timeline, to an entire track on your timeline, or to your movie overall. But the effect itself, how it's applied, and then how it's modified is very similar no matter which way you choose to apply it. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to select this event on my timeline. It's the one that my playhead is over. And whenever you apply an effect to part of your movie, you do want to make sure the playhead is sitting on top of the event or the track that you're actually applying the effect to, or you won't see its results. But with this event on my timeline, I'm going to click on the effects button in the upper right hand corner to open up the plugin chooser. As you can see, there are more than 60 effects, but these effects really don't represent the entire complement of effects that are available in the program because within each one of the effects are variations. So for instance, if I were to select the cookie cutter effect and click OK, you see that not only do I get a dialog window in which I have various properties I can adjust, but there's also a drop down, a preset drop down right at the top of the dialog window. And within here are a number of preset effects. These preset effects represent sets of affected or adjusted properties. This one is the default setting the circle. You can go square with a border around it, diamond with a soft edge. So Within these 60 or so effects, you see you actually have probably half a dozen or a dozen different presets within them, greatly expanding the library of effects that are available to you. Once an effect is added, it appears on an effects chain that runs along the top of the video effects panel. And you can have any number of effects applied to a clip. And sometimes the order they're applied changes how the combination of effects works, you can disable an effect temporarily by unchecking it, or you can remove an effect entirely by selecting it and then going over here to the remove plugin button. If we click on the effects plus button here, it reopens the plugin chooser and we can choose another effect. So I'm going to select black and white. It's an easy one to see how it affects the clip or how it affects our video. Click OK. You can see it's added to my chain and you can see by default, it takes all the color out of our video. There are a number of settings for it under the preset menu, or we can simply adjust the level by adjusting the slider. Now, no effect need be applied at one setting the entire way through the clip. I'm going to just take this playhead and move it all the way back to the beginning of the clip, which happens to be behind a title. Don't let that confuse you. The title is actually a separate event on the timeline. And I can change how this black and white effect is applied so that it varies over the course of the clip. I'll move the playhead in just a little bit. And then I'm going to go to the right of the blend amount slider. And there is a little stopwatch. That's the animation button. And when I click it, you see that it opens up at the bottom of the dialog window, a keyframe controller. It's a miniature timeline representing the duration of the clip. And within it are these little keyframes. You can see that uh, two are automatically applied right at the beginning that represent settings for your effect. So I'm going to move the playhead out here. And you know what? I'm going to actually be smart. This little padlock here, if I turn that on, the playhead on this little keyframe controller is synchronized to the playhead on the timeline. So you can see as I move one, it moves the other. I'm going to come in just a little bit, like right about here. And I'm going to create some keyframes. Now these keyframes are going to be duplicates of the ones before them. So these kind of like default keyframes at the beginning of the timeline. We're just going to duplicate them by clicking on Add Keyframe. So these keyframes represent this setting for blend amount, 100% black and white. Now move the playhead just a little bit further. And now I'm going to change the blend amount to zero black and white, 100% color. You can see as I do that, automatically these keyframes are added to my keyframe controller. And now when I play the video, we will see the transition from black and white to color. Or play that event on our timeline and you can see black and white transitions to color. 
Now in our next session, we're actually going to talk more about keyframing because it's a very, very powerful tool and it appears in a number of forms throughout the program. But that's the basics of it. Keyframing allows you to change the settings of an event over the course of your video clip and actually create some pretty cool animated effects. There are effects for audio as well as video, and they're a lot of fun to play with, but try to use them with a purpose. Don't just use them to show off. They're at their best when you use them to tell your story and to enhance your video. Now, I hope you join me for part six of our eight part basic training tutorial series as we continue to look at the basics of this program, just sort of scratching the surface of the stuff we cover in the moviepix.com guide to Vegas Movie Studio Platinum and the moviepix.com guide to DVD Architect. I'm Steve Rossetti. We'll see you in part six.